folks ain't exactly welcome around here. Well, I don't believe in signs. Stay where you are. Get your hands up. Told you them signs wasn't fooling. Hey. Hello, bud. What are you playing? Keep him up. He ain't playing. You bet I ain't. You better turn those horses around and get out of here. Unless you want a skin full of lead. Now, wait a minute. You don't want to shoot us. He don't, I will. <laughs> oh heck. What'd you have to tag along for? Say, what is this? Daddy told us to guard the mine. Yeah. What's going on here? Hello, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. How about calling off your firing squad? Hello, boys. <laughs> it's all right, Billy. These are the friends I've been expecting. You mean the Musketeers? Yep. Well, sure glad to see you all. Hi. <laughs> uh, boys, uh, this is Billy. This Julie Jane. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Gosh, I'm sorry, honest. Oh, that's all right, Ben. You were just following orders. Say, Dave, didn't you used to have another young one? A little girl with freckles and a pug nose? He certainly has. And I've always said such nice things about you. Gosh, Nancy, you sure growed up in a hurry. And pretty, too. What is it, honey? I think you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing all right yourself. Well, come on, boys. Let's go up to the house. <laughs> Let me. Better let me before you kill each other. Come on, honey. When I came across this ore, I knew it struck it rich at last. Boy, you sure did. Dave, you didn't have to give us half your mind. Why not? You boys grub staked me, didn't you? <laughs> Say, this kind of news was worth coming for. I had another reason for sending for you. When Byron gets wind of this gold strike, he's liable to try and grab it. Byron? Who's he? <laughs> the Honorable Mayor of Santa Fe Junction. Well, what can he do? You've staked your claim, haven't you? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't dared to turn my back long enough to go over to the county seat and record it. Well, we'll take care of that first thing tomorrow. After my horses. Come on. Thank you. 
Thanks for the help. Oh, don't mention it. Well, we better get this bird in town and lock him up. Samples from Carson's mine? Sure. Here they are. Where's Joe? Probably on his way to jail. Jail? Yeah, our horses got away and we had to grab a couple of Carson's. He and three men took out after us and they caught Joe. Joe have any of this on him? No. Well, then for all they know, you're just a couple ordinary horse thieves. Right. How does it look? Well, if I'm any judge, Carson struck a bonanza. You want us and the boys to move in on him? No. First, I want you to take some of this over to Placerburg. Bring me a detailed report from the county assayer. Meanwhile, I'll go into town and talk to Harris. Maybe he can figure out something legal and more painless for Mr. Carson. I'll have him look after Joe, too. Get your horses, boys. We're heading for town. Looks like they finally caught up with Joe Moffat. Well, it's about time. You can't come busting in here telling me how to run my business. Well, I'm here, and you're gonna arrest this man. Turn me loose, Tom. I'll help you blast him out of town. What's the trouble? These guys are trying to accuse me of stealing Carson's horse. Ridiculous. Is that so? Well, who are you? I'm Moffat's attorney. I reckon he'll sure need you. Are you gonna lock him up, or are we gonna have to do it for you? Obviously. You're not acquainted with our local laws. The sheriff can't hold a prisoner without a signed court order. <laughs> That's a new one. Where do we get it signed? Over at Judge Hickson's, and he ain't holding court. We'll find him. Give us an order. Looks like they mean business, those boys. Thanks. We'll be back in two shakes. If you know what's good for your client, you'll see that he stays right here. I don't know who you are, boy, but I'm sure glad to shake your hand. Hello, Jed. I want you to meet my friends, the Musketeers. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, did you hear that? They're the Musketeers. Yeah. Newton here runs the store, you know. Glad to meet you, boys. <laughs> Too bad there ain't more like you around <laughs> these parts. You said something, boy. I wonder what they're doing out here. Maybe government business. You sure picked out a fine time to turn a horse thief. No, we wasn't after horses. Then comes the, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, the ambrosia, which is poured thusly, with reverence, with care. <laughs> ah, and now, for the mint. There, Timothy. You have a mint julep as it should be, but alas, is seldom made. Oh, Judge Hickson. Oh, hello, David. Uh, how's that charming family of yours? Fine, thanks. I want you to meet the Musketeers. How do you do? How are you? Howdy. Uh, 
that, gentlemen. Uh, won't you join me? <laughs> no, thanks. Sheriff says you'll have to sign that before he can arrest Joe Moffat. Joe Moffat? Uh, what's the charge? Horse stealing. Well, I... Uh... What's the matter, Judge? Afraid to sign it because he works for Mayor Byron? I think it advisable that first I consult with the defendant's counsel. I... Well, don't bother. We'll get him for you. Oh, of course, certainly. I better go see the boss. your tongue when you address this court and take off your hat. Thank you, my boy. Moffat, you're facing a very serious charge. And under the circumstances, I'm compelled to sign this order and have you held for trial. Nice going, Judge. Yeah, but when? This time next year? Never is more like it. I assure you, gentlemen, this case will be tried in the very near future. It'll be tried right now. Clear that desk. Get some chairs. Okay, Mayor. So that's his honor, the mayor. Brings his own jury. A swell chance we're gonna have. Let's stick around and see just how far this thing will go. Objection sustained. Continue. Sure, he stole my horse. Didn't I tell you? Are you sure you can prove the ownership of this animal? Huh. I can show you the bill of sale. Right here. We saw Moffat and another man right out of Dave's corral. We took out after him, but the other man got away. Moffat was riding Dave's horse when we grabbed him. That's all. Your Honor, the testimony so far has placed the accused in or about the vicinity of the Nancy Carter mine about noon today. Now, I have witnesses to prove that he was nowhere near there at the time indicated. Very well. Call your witnesses. Will you kindly tell the court what you and your companions were doing about noon today? We was branding cattle. Was anyone else with you? Sure. Will you kindly tell the court who it was? Joe Moffat. As the courts will agree, it is impossible for a man to be in two different places at the same time. Therefore, I move the case be dismissed. Motion granted. Case dismissed. Just a minute. What kind of a farce do you call this? Don't you approve of the way we conduct court? This isn't a court, it's a three-ring circus. Careful, young man. Of what? You're sworn to uphold the laws of this territory, and what do you do? Jump like a rabbit every time he cracks a whip. One more word from you, and I'll fine you for contempt of this court. Words fail to express my contempt for this court. As far as you're concerned, you're a fine running mate for his honor. You both ought to be behind the bars. I hereby fine you $100 for contempt of court and disturbing the peace. It's worth it. And 100 for you. Still worth it. And 100 for you, too. <laughs> a fine state of affairs. We catch a thief, bring him to trial, and what happens? We're soaked 300 hard-earned dollars. Well, I hate to say I told you so, boys, but that's how it is. What's the matter with the decent people in this town? Why do they stand for it? We're not going to much longer. Come on, boys. I move that we organize a vigilante committee. And I'm with you. I know how you feel about it, but that's not the way. Why not? Vigilantes saved California. And they cleaned up Idaho and did a mighty good job of it. Well, there's something else we ought to try first. What's that? Our right of appeal under the Constitution. 
This territory might still be a wilderness, but it's just as important to the Union as any of the states. And if we can argue... swooping down the hill. Buffalo Bill turns to me and he says, uh, Hey, cut it out. You got me doing it. Well, let's see. Where was I? Swapping lives with Buffalo Bill. What's that? Maybe it's them Indians coming. Quiet, Elmer. Still up? Sorry. You signed? Did we? Well, you certainly made a hit with Billy and Julie. I wish the rest of the family felt that way. How about it? Give me one good reason why I should. Kind animals and help old ladies across the street. That is when there aren't any young ones to help. The voice of experience. Yeah. You better hit the hay, Romeo. You and Dave got a long ride ahead of you tomorrow. Where? We're taking the petition to Governor Whitey. Oh. How about you going in my place tomorrow? Oh, no. I'm going to stay here and look after the mine. Well, be sure it's the mine you look at. Say, uh, why don't you come along tomorrow? Sorry. I have to stay here and cook for the boys. Lucky dog. Isn't the charming Miss Carson? Good morning, Judge Hickson. It is a fine morning, isn't it? I think it's kind of hot. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so it is. Perhaps a little cooling refreshment might remedy the matter. Won't you join me in a drink? Uh, 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 a dish of ice cream? I'd like to. But Daddy told me not to leave the wagon. He's in a hurry. Going somewhere? Uh-huh. We're going to Capital City to see the governor. The governor? Daddy wants him to put all the bad men in jail. He's going to take him a petition. Judge, what is a petition? Uh, a petition? Uh, why, it's a... Uh, 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 I've got to be going, my dear. Uh, excuse me, my dear. I... Aw, oh, Stoney, can't you come up here and ride with us? Maybe I'll do that, Julie. Here we go. Come on. Well, what's the good news? You had the right hunch, Chief. That ore is plenty rich. Here's the assayer's report. <laughs> well, the next thing is to get the mine it comes out of. Well, I checked with the county recorder's office while I was there, and Carson hasn't recorded his claim yet. Oh, smart boy. We'll do it for him. Gil. Gil. Dave Carson and Stony Brook have just left for Capital City with a petition of protest for the governor. So that's the reason the Mesketeers came in here. Don't you realize what this means? There'll be a federal investigation. We'd better pack up and get out of here. Oh, no. We're not leaving now. Be sensible, Gil. You've been running things as yourself and getting away with it because nobody had the courage or the influence to report you to Washington. But this time is different. These Mesketeers are going to get action once that petition reaches Governor Whiting. Don't worry. It's not going to reach him. Mac, yeah. you and Joe go after those two and bring back that petition. 
Guess Dave won't have much use for his mine after this. Oh, by the way, Joe, you know the description of that claim. After you boys take care of them, you go on to Placerburg. Find Lawyer Stone. He'll help you file in my name. Mac, you'll head back here and bring me that petition. Now, you got that straight? Yeah. Right. Wait. Gil, you can't do this. Who's going to stop me? There's a child on that wagon, Dave Carson's little girl. What of it? Listen, Gil, I have done some mighty shady things, and I've sunk pretty low, but I am not low enough to stand back and let you do this. Oh, no, you sniveling old fool. Get back there. All right, on your way. Idea. I heard what you said last night. I wasn't asleep. Well, now that you mention it, it isn't such a bad idea. I was afraid of that. Would you like to have Stoney for a big brother, Julie? Uh-uh. I want to marry him myself. <laughs> Boy, honey, he'll be an old man with gray hair by the time you grow up. <laughs> he won't neither, because I'm going to hurry. Partner, John Franklin. How do you do? Glad to meet you. How about getting their signatures on the petition? Oh, it's a good idea. See what you think about it, Ben. Johnny, where are you going? I'm going over to Placerburg to file on your daddy's claim. You wouldn't want anybody to steal his mine, would you? No, but... Well, don't you worry. I'll see you at Capital City this afternoon. Sign it. Here you are, Ben. So long. See you later. Bye, so long, Stoney. Hey, they're splitting up. This petition may turn the trick, Dave. Well, with the musketeers behind us, we're bound to get a new deal. So long. So long, boys. Won't be long now. Mark Crawley, 
Sam Skinner. And last but not least, our old friends, Ben Carey and John Franklin. <laughs> Those last two must have been the men who met Carson on the road this morning before me and Joe got there. Do you have to keep talking about it? What's the matter with you, anyway? Yeah, what are you scared of? We've got the petition. And that's just where you made your mistake. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Hey, Chief. This just came over the wire from Placerburg. Ah, then it must be from Joe. Stony Brook beat us to it. He filed a Carson claim before Joe got there. Why, you stupid, blundering fool, you let him get away. How'd I know he's heading for Placerburg? You had your orders? Just a minute, Gil. We're not late. Stony Brook kills Carson to get him out of the way. Sure. Then he goes on to Placerburg and files a claim himself. <laughs> And the Honorable Judge Hickson tries him for murder before the outraged citizens of Santa Fe Junction. It's perfect. You'll never make it stick. The men who signed that petition are still alive. They'll know who killed Carson and why. Even I couldn't get a conviction in the face of that. You won't have to. Mr. Brooke won't live to face trial. Dan, have the sheriff send this telegram to the Marshal of Placerburg. Gil, I'm warning you. I'll go pour yourself a drink. Hey, Stony Brook. Hello, Marshal Wood. How are you? Fine. Only I got some bad news for you. What's that? Just got word from Santa Fe Junction, ordering me to hold you for murder. Who am I supposed to have killed? It doesn't say. All I know is that the sheriff is on his way over. You better hand me your gun. Hold it, Jim. We've been friends a long time. Let me speak my piece. Go ahead. If you turn me over to that sheriff, I'm a dead Comanche. Probably shot in the back trying to escape. But if I resist arrest, well, there's my horse. I've got an even chance. What would you do in my place? I'll give you better than an even chance. I'm going back with you. You win. Tony could only see you now. Stop picking on Tucson. He's doing very nicely. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I always aim to please. Tucson, lullaby. brought in the bodies just a few minutes ago. I... I can't believe it. It don't seem possible. And that's not half of it. They've charged Stoney with the murder. Stoney? Stoney? Yes, they arrested him at Placerburg, and Byron is sending a posse after him now. Well, he'll never get back here alive unless we get to him first. You might make it if you took the shortcut over Morton's Ridge. Can you stay here till we get back? Why, of course. Where are they going? happened, or they wouldn't have left this way. Please, please, Nancy. Oh, but you've got to tell me. You've got to.
Rosalind. I'm swearing you two in as my deputies. And it'll be your job from now on to keep a close watch on the prisoner. Yes, sir. I'll get him. Howdy, Marshal. You know why I'm here. Yeah. Here's your prisoner. Sorry, Stoney. All right, you. I'll take his gun. No, I'll keep it. I'm going with you. All right, come on. Up to. I'll take care of him. My child, this has been a terrible blow. Why, only this morning I was talking to little Julie and... The judge is trying to tell you how we all feel. You have our deepest sympathy. Now, if there's anything I can do to... Thanks, but there's nothing anyone can do. At least I can promise that Stony Brook will be punished for this horrible crime. Oh, but it couldn't have been Stony. I'm afraid the evidence tells a different story. We have every reason to believe that he deliberately planned this murder to get possession of your father's mind. But he's been so kind to us. Uh, nevertheless, my dear, he's... Here's the posse. Marshal Wood? Yeah. What's the idea of Marshal Wood coming back with you? That's his idea, not mine. Now, we're much obliged to you, Marshal, for escorting our prisoner personally. That's quite all right. And yeah, now that he's here, we'll relieve you of his custody. I wouldn't think of it. Mayor, I'm ready to cooperate. In fact, my deputies and I are fully prepared to stay until after the trial. Your deputies? Yeah, I've just sworn in Tucson and a lullaby. The boys will have to take you and lock you up. If you mind, Marshal, I'd like to speak to Miss Carson. No, go ahead. Nancy, I'm... You dirty murderer! Billy! Billy! You killed my dad and my sister, and now I'm gonna kill you! Please listen to me. No, I won't listen. You're a dirty, rotten killer. And I hope they hang you. Billy, you don't know what you're saying. Let me go. Let me take him, Stoney. Please listen to me. Look at me. Your dad was my friend, and so was Julie. I couldn't do a thing like that to them. But they said you wanted the mine. But I don't need the mine. And I didn't kill your dad. Won't you believe me? Nancy, you don't think I did it, do you? No, Stoney. And Billy doesn't either. You didn't mean what you said, did you, Billy? No, I guess I didn't. Judge Hickson, the prisoner seems to want an early trial. Do you think you can accommodate him? Well, yes, Marshal. I think I can arrange it. I've done it before. Oh, no, Judge. This is going to be a fair trial. Terry and Franklin can testify that Dave was alive when I left him. Marshal, you say you arrested Stoney about noon? That's right. Why? Well, it just so happens that no one in Santa Fe Junction knew anything about the killings until after one o'clock. Nobody except the killers. Did you get Carson's effects from the coroner? Yeah. What's left of them. 
His money's gone, and so's the petition. There's your answer. Somehow Byron found out about that petition. The only way he could prevent it reaching the governor was to have Dave killed. Then made you the ghost. There's no reason for you to stand trial, Stoney. We have enough evidence right now to have the case dismissed. But I'm going to stand trial. And the testimony that clears me will convict Mr. Byron. I'm the sheriff in this town. What right is Wood to move in and take charge? The right of United States Marshal in the United States Territory. And there's nothing that we can do about but it. But I say there is. Hey, Chief. Uh -huh. Now, what is it, Tex? The Marshal is sending his deputies out to get Carrie and Franklin. Marshal Woods certainly isn't wasting any time. First the orders a trial, and now he's rounding up witnesses. Say, they can furnish an alibi for Brook. Tex. Yeah? Get Joan, take care of Carrie and Franklin before those deputies get to them. You can shoot 40 witnesses, but it won't do you any good. Before this is over, the people will have us on trial. And once they're really aroused... Hold they... it, Judge. You don't know it, but you've given me the solution. Aroused. the idea. Just thought we'd like a little company while we're waiting for your witnesses to come home. So sorry for Nancy and Billy. It's an outrage, Mrs. Jones. Shooting a grown man is bad enough. But when it comes to murdering a poor defenseless kid. Yeah, that's the lowest thing I ever heard of. And I just heard they were taking the Passenberg for safekeeping tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Say, boys, they're gonna try and sneak that killer out of town tonight. Are you going to let them get away with this, Henry Jones? He's got a right to a trial by jury. Well, according to the law. Where's the law around here? Yeah, we're the taxpayers. And if they do try him, he'll squirm out of it. Most of you men have kids of your own. What if this happened to your children? I take the law into my own hands. I say we ought to make an example of this murderer. You're right. What he needs is a rope. What do you say, men? <laughs> Nancy, you've got to eat something, child. You do, Billy. I'm not hungry. I wonder what's going to happen. Anything in this terrible place. Cal, hand me down those shells. I'd better close up the store for the night. Pa, what's happened? Nothing yet, but it's liable to if that crowd gets any uglier. The marsh is afraid they might try and storm the jail. But can't you get help? Yes. I'm going over right now and wire Placerberg. I wish Tucson and Lullaby would get back. Where are they? They went out to get Carrie and Franklin. They should have been back by now. And you women better stay off the street.
Here, George. The marshal says for you to send this right away. Sure, Mr. Newton. Marshal's getting worried. He's yelling for help. George, send this? Sure. <laughs> right over to you. Say, the party's really warming up. send this and send it right now. And don't try to fake it. I happen to understand the Morse code. Marshal's office, trouble of Santa Fe Junction. How does it look out there, Marshal? Not so good. Well, if there's going to be any shooting, you better let me in on it. Oh, you stay here. I'll see if I can get that mob to listen to reason. Stay where you are. I'm in charge here. Then hand over that killer. He's entitled to a fair trial, and I'm going to see that he gets it. Now I'm warning you all. Break this up and go back to your homes. And we're warning you. Hand over that killer, or we're coming in after him. Yeah, and I'll shoot the first man that steps across that line. Come on, we're not letting no marshal stop us. Stop, stop! You can't do this. He killed your folks, didn't he? No, no, he did not. Ah, she's sweet on the boy. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Out of the way. Come on, get that Marshal, we've got to do something. Here, let Stoney out the back and tell him to head for Placerburg. Nancy. You've got to get out of here. No, you're getting out. Nancy. Nancy. Did you hear something? Nah. <laughs> How's that? You lose again.
told you I heard something. Mob's starting trouble in town. We gotta get there and help the marshal. We're right with you. Marshal's posse's coming from Placerburg. What? He... He made me send the message. Who did? Mac. Yeah? We can't waste any more time. Get over there and burn him out. Hey, Dan. We gotta finish this in a hurry. Posse's coming from Placerburg. Kill no more, kids. Jerusalem, Nancy was in there. You mean... She was trying to save him. Take care of Billy. Come on, lullaby. Stoney. Stoney. Why, we thought you were... So did Mr. Byron. Miss Newton said Nancy was in the... She's all right, thanks to the explosion. Blew a wall out and we crawled through. 
Take their guns, Lullaby. Hand it over, Gramp. You won't need this where you're going. Just a moment, Brooke. You've been through a terrible ordeal. I can promise you that every man responsible will be punished before I'm through. You're through right now. Are you trying to accuse me of... Take it easy, Gil. They've got nothing on us. No, nothing at all. Except embezzlement, claim jumping, inciting to riot and murder. The murder of Dave and Julie Carson. Ah, you're crazy. I was right here when those killings took place. Naturally. Because Mac and Joe were out committing them for you. You sent that wire to Flash Bird? Right. Why, you drunken old... <laughs> Won't you, Stoney? Sure. Lullaby, what's holding you up? We gotta go. It ain't me, it's Elmer. I don't want to ride in this roll. I'm no hot dog. Shut up or I'll slap some mustard in your face. I'll smother. I'll suffocate. In fact, I won't be able to breathe. Can we depend on that? <laughs> so you're all again me. Not a pal in a car load. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Quiet, Elmer, quiet. You're coming back soon, aren't you, Stoney? Sure, we all are. Just as soon as we get that machinery for the mine and tend to a few other things. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. You can't do this to me. <laughs> Goodbye. So long, Stoney. <laughs> 